what is pathogen? Pathogen is any type of agent that can be living or non-living organism that can bring harmful to our body which might lead to disease. They can be bacteria or virus or maybe chemicals. Okay, Antigen. Antigen is actually a macromolecule, a protein that can be found on the surface of the cell membrane of the pathogen that can stimulate our immune response, to be specific, our adaptive immune response. What can be found at the antigen? We have this binding site called antigenic determinant or epitopes. So epitopes can be found on antigen. While we have discussed about B cell receptor and T cell receptor previously, right? At the receptors of these two types of cells, we have antigen binding site. Okay, from the name itself, we know that it will bind to the antigen antigen binding site. So the epitope of the antigen will bind to the antigen binding site of the B cell receptor or T cell receptor. They will bind to them after the receptor recognize the antigen. What happens upon binding? Okay, if they say the epitope of the antigen bind to the B cell receptor, it will stimulates the B cell receptor to undergo activation. Okay, it will stimulate the B cells okay, to undergo activation. So the B cells will undergo cloning and difference, differentiation producing two groups of cells. One of it is plasma cell. Plasma cell is the one later that will secrete antibodies. So antibodies is finally the one that going to uh, help to destroy the pathogen earlier. So we are going to discuss this more later during the process of antibody mediated immunity. Antigen is a large molecule. They either can be proteins or polysaccharides that can be found on the surface of the cell membrane of the pathogen or maybe they are secreted to the extracellular fluid as toxins. They will be recognized by the lymphocytes, such as the B cells and T cells. Once they have been recognized by the lymphocytes through the specific antigen receptors, such as the B cells receptor and T cell receptor, it will stimulate a specific immune response. In this case, the immune response can be antibody-mediated immunity and cell-mediated immunity. So as, as I mentioned earlier, the antigen can be components of pathogen, for example, toxins that are released in the extracellular fluid from bacteria cells, for example. And there can be proteins and glycoproteins that can be found on the surface of the pathogen, either they are living or non-living organism, or they can be at the surface of the transplanted organ. So these are the examples of the pathogen shown here are bacterium and also virus and these are the antigen that will be recognized by the lymphocytes. Bacteria for example, so these are the antigen, however bacteria maybe they secrete toxins toxins to the extracellular fluid and this toxin will also considered as antigen. Now, let's study the structure and the function of antibody. Antibody is also known as immunoglobulin or Ig. So it is a type of protein secreted by the B cells or plasma cell after the B cell has been activated. It has an antigen binding site that is complementary with the antigenic determinant or epitope that can be found in antigen that we've discussed earlier. It binds to intact antigen, meaning here that they binds to antigen that is not degraded as compared to T cell receptor. So T cell receptor needs to bind to antigen fragment, the antigen that has been digested in the body of the host cells. What happens Upon the binding of antibody and antigen, 
So basically, it will interfere the pathogen activity. It will mark the pathogen for neutralization. Neutralization meaning here that the pathogen will be inactive. They are able to infect any cells or maybe it will lead to destruction of the pathogen itself. For example, maybe the binding of antibody and antigen on the surface of the pathogen will call up other leukocytes such as a macrophage to come and digest the pathogen through phagocytosis. Shown here is the structure of antibody. It might look similar as the B cell receptor with having a Y shape, but however, antibody is actually being secreted by the B cells, which is the plus, which are the plasma cells, and they are not attached to the membrane of the B cells. Antibody consists of four polypeptide chains, which has two heavy chains and two light chains. The chains are bonded together by disulfide bridge. They have variable region with different sequence of amino acid which determine to which antigen they should bind with. The variable region have a shape here which known as the antigen binding site which bind which going to bind to the antigen at the epitope. The constant region determine which class of antibody or immunoglobulin. There are five classes of immunoglobulin, IgG, IgA, IgM, IgD, and IgE. Shown here in the figure is the binding of antibodies to antigenic determinants or epitope of an antigen. In the diagram, there you can see that there are two different types of antibody, antibody A and antibody B. How do we know that there are two different molecules? We can see at the antigen binding site. The shape of the antigen binding site for antibody A and antibody B are different. And therefore, there are different types of antibody. There, are one, there is a one antigen molecule. However, there are three different types of antigenic determinants or epitopes that can be found in this antigen. Epitope 1, epitope 2, and epitope 3. And each of them will bind to their specific antibody. Meaning here, this antigen molecule able to bind to three different types of antibody. What happens upon the binding of antibody and antigen? They will form antigen, antibody, complex, which finally leads to the destruction, inactivation of the pathogen or its destruction.